So Dr. West Tobin, thank you so much for joining me today. You have a big event happening here at the yes, university. We do. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, we, we have a number of different things uh, planned. I, I know we'll, we will be having a, a lecture of what to expect at 11 o'clock. We're going to be showing a video on this big screen out here um, throughout the, the day. Um, we also have, we'll have three telescopes outside that people can look through. You can see sunspots, you can see solar flares, you, can, you might even be able to see some uh, uh, other features of the sun that most people can't see without a good telescope. Um, and then we'll also have a solar walk, so for people that are taking their time, getting here early, staying a little bit late, there's a, an activity they can do outside and enjoy the warm weather that we're expected to have today a little bit more about your role here at the university and then the role you're going to play during the total eclipse today. Well, I'm, I'm uh, an assistant professor in physics, uh, but I'm the only astronomer um, and I'm the, uh, the only full-time physics person at this particular uh, campus of Indiana University. And uh, so uh, pretty much anything science related to the eclipse or to astronomy is, is, I, is my job. I have to cover cover that, I have to help out where I can. And today I'm just leading the, um, um, the process that I'm, I'm guiding people through, uh, making sure that they're watching the eclipse safely, using the eclipse glasses when they're supposed to, taking them off for totality when they're supposed to, and preparing to put them back on um, in advance and just ensuring that no one has even the slightest bit of uh, um, potential for eye damage. You know, we wanna avoid that as much as we can. Absolutely. What should people expect today leading up to totality, at peak totality, and following it? Well, leading up to totality, it, it will seem a, like a slow process. Through our telescopes, though, you can actually see the moon moving slowly across the face of the sun. It, it will go from uh, bottom right, almost bottom, uh, and pass over the top left. Um, and during that time, you can you can see sunspots, so it'll, it'll add to it. And if we do have that high level cirrus type clouds, um, it'll cross over the face of the sun and make it a, a wonderful view. Um, when totality occurs, we're gonna, right, just before totality, we'll have uh, most likely a diamond ring effect. Um, and the diamond ring effect will just be visible through your eclipse glasses. And as soon as that's gone, you can take them off and experience uh, uh, full totality just with your eyes. And you'll see a corona, you'll, you should be able to see some streamers and some coronal loops. Um, uh, and then coming out of totality, um, you should be able to see uh, Bailey's beads coming out and, and possibly also a diamond ring effect depending on uh, exactly where the lunar surface is relative to here. And then it's just a partial eclipse all the way until about 424. Okay, so this is an extensive event. For mm -hmm. those who, who don't know a much, as much about all those different terms, can you tell me a little more about the diamond ring effect, the corona, the streamers? Sure, so the diamond ring effect is basically the last rays of light that are traveling through the lowest points on the lunar surface, the valleys basically between mountains. Um, and when they, they come through, they produce a very brilliant shine to them that looks like a diamond. And at the same time, you're seeing uh, the appearance, the brightening of the corona around the moon, which gives you uh, what it looks like a ring with a, a sparkling diamond on one side. Um, and it's a, a, a brilliant uh, view. Uh, for the corona, uh, coronal streamers uh, are basically jets of the atmosphere that stream away at, at a very high rate of speed. So it, it looks like it's almost like the sun's hair standing on end. Um, coronal loops, however, are going to come out and they'll go right back down into the sun and, and you can actually see it. And the, the best part about that is you're actually, what you're witnessing is the magnetic field of the sun creating these things out of the atmosphere of the sun. And these are only things you can see in totality? That's correct. Wow, that's incredible. Now you spoke a little bit to the cirrus clouds and everybody's a little bit worried about that, <laughs> but, but what is it about them that makes you say, actually, hold on a second? Well, when, when you look through a telescope, or well, particularly when you look through eclipse glasses uh, at the sun, you see this amazingly round object mm -hmm. and it seems to 
you know, it almost seems like the moon is starting to take little bites out of it uh, as, as it goes by, but it really doesn't change moment to moment unless you're looking through a telescope. Uh, so having some slight cloud cover move across the face of it actually helps you remember that it's, or helps you realize that it's a real thing, that you're really looking at um, the, the sun and the, and the moon is in fact there taking bites out of the, out of the view of the sun. Um, without the Cirrus, it, it can actually be a somewhat boring uh, appearance um, there for the first 75 minutes. Um, but with, this, with Cirrus clouds, it livens it up. You, you just want to keep on looking. Is there anything else that you'd like to add in regards to today's event? I would say uh, the, the real trick is not to, not to expect to take pictures, just experience it, be there for the moment. Um, some people have called this, a, this kind of a, an event a soul changing or a soul searching experience. And uh, it's good to just, just be human. You don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be a, a, a photographer, just experience it and, and be there in the moment. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Westhoven, for joining us this morning. I know you have such a busy day in store, so we really appreciate the time. Sure.